Hello everyone, welcome to the Meal Pro channel. If you're new here, I'm Chef Justin, and today we're going to be covering how to braise meat. Now, braises are perhaps the finest, most forgiving way of cooking. It is almost impossible to actually screw up a braise. Well, almost impossible. I got faith in you, don't worry. So what I'm going to do is actually go over a few uh, things to look out for as you're going through and braising meats. First and off the top is how to choose the right kind of meat for braising. What you're looking for when you're braising meat is cuts that are usually pretty tough. That means that they've got a lot of work on the animal. So when you're talking about beef, you're looking at brisket, short ribs, um, and also shanks, that sort of thing. For pork, pork has the wonderful pork belly, which, as you all may know, uh, is what goes into bacon, but also makes for a wonderful braise. It's nice and tender. And of course, the great workhorse of pork would be the pork butt, which is actually the shoulder. It's a long story. Uh, for chicken, you want to stay away from chicken breast. You're looking more for the legs and thighs. Stuff that's seen a little bit more action for, from a flightless bird. But the real key here is, generally when you're braising meats, I hate to let you in on a little secret, but you're using the cheap cuts. All the stuff that generally isn't going to go into a you know, screaming hot pan or on the grill, cooked really fast and be very impressive for your date. Nope, we're talking about stuff that's going to be cooked low and slow over a long period of time, so it starts to break down. It's real comfort food and something that I always love during the fall and winter months because there's just something really nourishing about it. So now that we've uh, chosen our cuts today, I'm going to be working with a little brisket. This I've just cubed up with a little bit of salt. Nice pan, screaming hot, starting to smoke. I know, I know, I told you low and slow, but it's kind of the first do thing for uh, when you're going to be doing braises. Like when you're braising meat, since it is so low and slow, you gotta start out by getting some nice color on it. So we're gonna throw these in here. Then we're just gonna kind of let them sit. The big thing is that we are looking to get these nice and heavy brown, good crust on them. Because that flavor, you can't get sitting in a uh, pot full of liquid. So we're going to let those go for a little while. And while uh, they start to color up, I'm going to go over some of the other do's and don'ts. All right, so while this browns up, we're going to go over our kind of best practices. So if the bit first thing to do is to get good color on it, well, the second thing after that is to choose the right braising liquid. Basically, you're looking for any kind of flavors that are going to go together. So if you want to look for kind of liquid bases, wine is always a wonderful choice. Red wines go great with beef and uh, braises such as beef bourguignon. White wine and some chicken thighs are delightful. Uh, you can even use some uh, different fruit juices and fruit purees. Give it a bit more of a uh, tropical feel sometimes. Uh, actually, the stock also is perhaps the finest choice you have available. You really can't help when you uh, go ahead and really, it's like reinforce that flavor. Uh, another great option is to just go ahead and let it roll and create its own juices. Usually when you have a pan packed full of uh, meat and vegetables and you're going to be cooking low and slow, that's going to go ahead and give you some wonderful juices all on its own to kind of keep things moist in the uh, pot there. Perhaps one of my favorites, and I'll be sharing this recipe with you in just a minute, would actually be for vegetable purees. Uh, one of my favorites that we'll be making today is that Chili Colorado, which is a wonderful puree of chilies, 
garlic, onion, and some other aromatics. Then we're gonna go ahead and uh, mix in with this brisket to create a wonderful chili Colorado. All right, as you can see, it's like we're starting to get some really good color on this. That's that Maillard reaction. It's going to give you nice caramelized flavors, really intensify the uh, beef to it. So while we hit the other side, can I go ahead and cover what don't to do? First of all, don't use water in your braise. Water is how we get flavor out of stuff. Once you put it in your braise, it's going to suck it right out of whatever meat that you're trying to cook. Along the second line, the second one would be, don't use too much liquid. When you're braising, you just want enough to kind of uh, come up to the, about the halfway point on your pieces of meat. So that's going to go ahead and make sure that it stays moist, but you're not making soup out of it. The next one is to, don't use too acidic of a braise. While vinegar may seem like a good idea, that's just going to make your meat even tougher than when it started. And also, you're just going to get that concentrated vinegar flavor. The next thing to don't underdo is don't under season. You want to make sure that your braising liquid and aromatics are pretty much uh, almost salty to the taste. More so than you might think. Because that salt is going to be what's finally going into your meat and it's going to make everything nice and flavorful. Now when I say don't under season, that brings us to the next one is don't try to braise in something's marinade. Marinades are often heavily seasoned with salt and sugar and all sorts of other things to get flavor into stuff while it's cold. When you're braising, you're just going to concentrate all of those down into the meat itself and especially uh, sugary marinades tend to burn and no one wants that. All right, these uh, look like we got plenty of color on both sides and we are good to go. So I'm going to transfer these over to my favorite braising vessel, the slow cooker. Oh, that's right. I know, it's been sitting in your pantry ever since you promised you were going to start using it and uh, making meals for yourself every day before you left for work. Yeah, it's still there. We have a wonderful use for it. We're going to go ahead and add all of our meat directly in. We want to make sure to get any sort of juices that have been cooked in there as well. Next up, since like I said, we're making Chili Colorado, well, for that, you need a little red sauce. And I've made one up today. Doing a little magic of television. We're uh, cheating ahead. But this one is made by taking a half an onion, four to six cloves of garlic, one tablespoon of cumin, six dried pasilla peppers, eight dried guajillo or California chili peppers, then one fresh jalapeno. It's up to you if you want to remove the uh, ribs or not to keep it as spicy as you'd like. You're going to cover that with just enough water to reach the top. Then simmer it until everything's soft, puree it, add a little salt, and then a little uh, vinegar to top it off. I know these are all things I told you to avoid. Then we're just going to go ahead and cover this up and let it go for... oh let's say six hours, it will vary. But here's the beautiful thing about braises. They're almost impossible to overcook. Again, I said almost. So long as they don't turn out to be charcoal. But they are very forgiving, and when you put them, when you cook things low and slow in a moist temperature, it will take a long time, but it won't go over nearly as quickly as when they're in a pan. All right, everybody, that's it for this episode. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you like this video or found it helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the Meal Pro channel to be in the loop for when I release new content. If you have not already, make sure to follow us on Instagram, at Meal Pro. 
We love connecting with you guys on there as well. As always, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.